<clears throat> Welcome to chapter 70 of Memoirs of a White Guy. Man, we've been doing this for a while now. Chapter 70. Like, if, if I told someone, hey, I've spoken, I've not even spoken, I've yelled to myself for over 70 hours straight in my, like, in the last year, they wouldn't speak to me ever again. They'd run away and they'd call the cops. Okay? They'd be like, what are you, why are you telling me this? While they're like in their pocket dialing triple zero, okay? Because that, <laughs> that's strange. I've done this every single Monday for 70 weeks. Just t this, talking. Like I'm the only one here. I'm in my lounge room and my neighbours can probably hear me. Hey, go on, neighbours. What up? No reply because they're probably calling the cops. So... But 70, holy shit. So thank you guys to everyone who's stuck around. Uh, if you've been here from the start, you're a legend. Mate, if you've even been here since like episode 50, okay, you're almost an old time listener now. Like, and also if you're new, welcome aboard, okay? Welcome aboard the shit meme train. It's great to have you here. I'm your conductor, Luke. Um, I'm the one who sits at the caboose. Oh no, I'm, I'm the engine room of the shit memes. Oh, not really. I'd say you guys are the engine room. And, um, yeah, I'm the caboose. I just trail along at the back and just, you know, walk up the train, see how it's going, make sure the memes are still coming along, fueling. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm half the... Look, the train metaphor is falling apart, guys. All I'm saying is, welcome aboard the shit meme train. Next stop, whatever the fuck I talk about today. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, firstly, it's hot. If you're in Australia right now, You'd be like, oh shit, really Luke, is it hot? I couldn't notice, my face was just melting off. Hadn't, hadn't walked outside in two minutes. You don't even need to walk outside in Australia to be like, you just gotta like, wake up in the morning and you're like, already bothered. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I wake up and like, I breathe in and I'm like, oh, I already feel sick. Like, between like, December and February. Everyone just, all everyone does in Australia is just like, have barbecues, drink, and complain that it's hot for like three months of the year. Like, no joke, our country almost shuts down in January, except for the tennis, okay, in Melbourne. The only thing that happens is the tennis. And no, like, no one even goes, really. Like, everyone just watches it on fucking TV. Like, the only people working are the people at Channel 7, I think. And like every other channel is just playing reruns. Or, oh, and the cricket. That's all we do. We just watch sport for two months a year and a whole entire country shuts down. Like I'm pretty sure there's like an abnormal amount of public holidays between like just like Christmas and end of January, okay? I feel like every day is a public holiday. Like, I mean, or maybe it's just because I do fuck all. You know what? There's, I bet you there's like a whole country of people working their asses off right now, going like, hey Luke, you're so out of touch with the average Australian, you're sitting in your bloody lounge room, telling your dick jokes, pretending that like you're a part of the grind. I'll admit, sometimes this lifestyle as a comedian slash full-time dickhead, it does make me a little out of touch, not in like a, I think I'm the best way, more like I know for a fact I'm a massive piece of shit way, but I refuse to understand normal people's lives. Like, if anything, I think I'm below a normal human being. Like, you, all you guys, you go out and you, you study at your unis and you're and you bloody... You're good on you, you know? Like, you're, you're planning. Like, you're at least planning to contribute to society by going to uni and one day maybe getting a job. Pretty hard in this economic climate, but... Your intentions are definitely positive. Like, I mean, I know you're, you probably don't see it that way. You guys are like, oh, no, I'm just drinking goon right now on the way to a fucking music festival. I'm just listening to this podcast. I haven't thought about uni in, like, eight weeks. But in the back of your mind, you're still going like, oh, you know, one day I might be an engineer and then I'll stop drinking so much goon. But until then, you know, you're a piece of shit like me. But at least you have the intention to like do good things, like you know, people are oh, working child hair, child uh, not child hair. <laughs> I work in child care. You should never work in children's hair, okay? I just I don't know. I'd call the cops. Why are you work? Why are you in children's hair? Unless you're picking out lice, shouldn't go near a children's hair. 
Okay? A child tear, sorry. But the point is, what's my point? Oh yeah, the point is, I just don't understand that mindset of like, you know what I mean? Like sometimes I think I come across as really out of touch and I'll say like one little thing that people will be like, that does not relate to me in any way, shape or form. And I'm like, oh yeah, because I have no idea what it's like to even want to contribute to society. And sometimes people like defend me and go, nah, we all need entertainment. We all need a bit of a laugh, a bit of comedy. Not real. Like, you don't really. <laughs> I'm fucking, u- like, I'm practically useless. Like, say, if you like any comedian and you're like, oh my god, they're the best. You're like, hey, useless. Like, Jerry Seinfeld. Useless. Great show. Love his work. Talented. One of the best writers in the world. Fucking useless. He could have cured cancer. Like, you ever think about that? Jerry Seinfeld could have probably, like, maybe he could have been the guy who cured cancer, but instead he's like, no, I want people to pay money to laugh at me. And that's fine. But all I'm saying is just choosing this lifestyle as, like, an entertainer. Like, you're not, (laughs) you're not contributing, perhaps, to your full potential. It's a lot of fun. And like, yeah, I do get messages sometimes like, oh my god, you, I love your videos, you helped me through so many hard times and stuff. That's, that's awesome. That's like the, seriously, like the only benefit <laughs> of doing this job is that you do make people happy. But I think sometimes I just say shit, like I'll be at like a 21st or something and like, I'll just be like, oh yeah, like you know when you do that on like Tuesday mornings? Like I'll just be like, oh yeah, you know, I have to duck down to the uh, shops that are... T- you know, 11.30am on a Tuesday, and people will be like, how'd you have time for that? Weren't you at work? And I'm like, oh no, I don't, I don't do job. I <laughs> Like, unless I'm at the radio station, I don't do, like, this is it. I'm just, this is my job right now. I'm at work, on my couch, alright? <laughs> like, I don't know, I, th- I just feel maybe sometimes I need to go, you know what would be good for me? Like, as a comedian, doing... A week of work experience just with a stranger like who has a real job and I have to like sit next to him because the only I've never really had a real job and I think sometimes I like can't relate to people who like want to kill themselves you know I kind of want to feel what that's like I wake up every day and I'm like doing what I love how good's this you know what I mean I want that you know I want that suicidal grind a little bit sometimes you know, I want to wake up. Like, the only time I've ever felt that depressed is where I did, like, furniture removal for two months when I was, like, 16. And I was getting paid $15 an hour. And I worked with this stinky guy named Chad. Bloody stinky Chad, man. This dude, he was, had, like, he used to always wear Metallica t-shirts. And he had, like, long hair down to his butt. And he smelled like tuna and bad decisions. And I, yeah, I used to have to wake up at 7 a.m. It's, oh, just the worst. I've no, I don't think I've, you know what? I take it back, guys. Once you've worked with Stinky Chad, you're officially a human, you've grinded, and you're bloody in touch with the everyday Australian. Stinky Chad is the de- definition of bringing you back down to earth. Because as soon as, as soon as you feel like your life's going well, you, then you get reminded of Stinky Chad. And that's exactly what just happened to me. So I take back what I said. I'm in touch, okay? I'm I'm officially a true blue, working class Australian, doing my podcast in my lounge room. And there's nothing you can say about it, okay? Uh, and also, I think I just touched the microphone. I think I just did something with the gain, because I can see that the audio, like my audio bars look different, which means I probably now sound like, I don't know if I should touch it, oh, I don't know. I don't know, I, I think I need to pause. <laughs> I need to pause the podcast. I think I sound like I'm coming out of a tin can right now. God, this is the most unprofessional podcast of all time. Um, okay, I think I'm going to pause it. Before I pause the podcast and fix this audio, I just wanted to say that um, I'm an idiot. Uh, how about I stop complaining and how about I just acknowledge that, hey, Luke, being a comedian and getting to sit around all day and not having to get a real job, that's a pretty good bloody life. So... I'm really, I don't know what I'm saying, to be honest. I'm just very privileged. And also, I work hard at being a dickhead, okay? And you can't take that away from me. Dude, I'm I'm such a better dickhead than anyone I know. 
I am king of the dickheads. Like, I can guarantee if you think you're a dickhead listening to this, like, I could probably be a bit of a comedian. I'm a bit of a dickhead as well. I'm like, Luke, mate, I will out dickhead you any day. Just listen to me say Pugot. <laughs> listen to me pronounce Peugeot. And you'll be like, oh, yeah, he's a dickhead. Good on him. Um, so, yeah, uh, maybe I'm, yeah, I'm just being stupid. That, I, do, <laughs> I do this all the time. You know what it is? Sometimes I just feel, I feel like, I don't know, because I am super happy with my life, but I feel like that's such an arsehole thing to say all the time. So I'm like, you know what? I need to shit on myself. And then I realize, no, I don't. I'm very lucky that I get to do this with my life. And I'm more lucky that people enjoy it. And uh, so, you know what? I'm not going to go back and do a week of work experience with buddy Stinky Chad. And I am going to fix this podcast audio. And when we come back, what's next on my list? I am going to talk about tennis and hopefully not sound like I'm talking out of a tin can. All right, guys, I'm pausing the podcast in three, two, one. As you guys know, if you've been listening to the podcast lately, I've been playing a lot of tennis, which means I've been experiencing a lot of gout pain, which turned out to be tennis toe, not gout. But anyway, um, I've been watching the tennis. That was my point, right? And uh, I don't know if you guys saw this. It didn't really ha- even happen in the Australian Open, which is the big Grand Slam happening in uh, Melbourne right now. It happened like I don't I don't know what happened. It, I just saw a new like a I just saw a news report of uh, Bernard Tomic, an Australian tennis player, being interviewed post match after he lost uh, a game. That I think I don't think he even qualified for the Australian Open, right? And I don't know if you guys saw this um, interview. But he pretty much acted like the biggest asshole of all time, Bernard Tomic, like Australia's mo- like who who would have thought Australia's most hated tennis player would be a fucking dick again? <laughs> if you didn't hear it, th- this is what he said. I think I've got a clip up here. This is what he said in an interview. I don't know if you guys will be able to hear it because it's coming off my computer. Uh, so the news reporter asked him what he's going to do now that he didn't qualify. Uh, for the Australian Open, and this is what Bernard Tomic said. Where you go from now? Um, I just count money, that's all I do. I count my millions. <laughs> so if you didn't hear what he just said then, it was, I'm going to go home and count my money, that's all I do, I just count my millions. Big call. Like, from any Australian. In any field, any profession. Huge call. I'm going to go ca- count my millions. How many million, like, you're not the inventor of Snapchat, all right? You're not Bill Gates. (laughs) What do you mean that's all I do? That's all I do, man. I just wake up, I I set my alarm for six, and I just wake up, and I start counting. Just one. So (laughs) how many millions does he have? Wait, I'm going to Google it. Bernard Tomic Net Worth. He must have a lot, considering that's all he does. Bernard Tomic Net Worth. It better be over 10, or otherwise, like, how is that all you do? I count my millions. Uh, Burn Atomic Net Worth. Uh, Burn Atomic has an estimated net worth of 2 million. <laughs> He's like, I'll go home, and I, all I do is count my millions. One. Two. All right, guys, I'm just going to probably head off early tonight. Uh, <laughs> I'm done for the day. <laughs> Fucking moron. What do you mean all I do is count my moons? How shit is... Like, how shit is Bernard Tomic at counting? <laughs> and the thing that got me about this was, right, that it just... I don't know, crack me up, because it was just like, man, in Australia especially, and it's particularly if you're a sportsman, you don't have to be a good person to be successful. Like, in my industry... Uh, You know, especially comedian, it's all about being likable, being relatable, which clearly I'm struggling with. I'm so out of touch these days because I'm a piece of shit. But, you know what I mean? Like, it's all about being a likable character and stuff, which is, you know, I guess I don't actively pursue. (laughs) I'm sure Bernard Tomic's not going to like me now. I mean, I I don't think Bernard Tomic will hear this because he's just, all he does is count his millions. He doesn't listen to podcasts, so I can't expect him to have time to listen to this shit podcast trashing him out. Um, I think, I think the Herald Sun does that a lot. Well, that's the thing, though. They probably don't do it enough, I think. I mean, 
Uh, yeah, yeah, because what was I saying? Yeah, uh, Australian sports people, you don't have to be a good person to be successful. You know, like, yeah, my industry, you know, say, you wouldn't go see a comedian if you acted like an asshole. I mean, I guess, like, Jim Jeffries is pretty big, but, like, I don't know, there's something real likable about Jim, I think. Like, I've got to see him, and he's one of my favourite comedians, and there's something that I'm just like, ah, he's, he says some shit things, but I fucking like him. But, like... Man, if you, if I acted how like Burn Atomic does and like all these interviews and come out and be like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm bored of tennis and you know, I'm bored of comedy. I'm too good at it now. Like it just bores me. I got so much money. I count my millions and I threw my bloody microphone on the ground and cracked the shits. Like no one would come and see me live. But just because like everyone just worships. If you're a sportsman in Australia, people will worship you because you're like, yeah, but he hits a ball with a racket over a net. Way faster than me, so you know, good on him. Like, l- let's give him millions a year. Let's give him two million a year just so we can count his millions. I know ne- I never understood that about Australian culture. Like, I don't know. There's been lots of sportsmen over the years who are really bad sports and terrible human beings who have been very successful because they're skilled. I reckon it should go both ways. That's I always like a sportsman who's humble. You know, like your bloody your bloody Ricky Pontings of the world or your you know what I mean? There's, there's good people out there. Your Cadell Evanses, what a champ that bloke is. But man, bloody Nick Curry, like these people are and Burn Atomic. People like look up to these people. There's probably people listening to this right now with tennis fans and look up to Burn Atomic. And like, man, when I grow up, I just want to count my money. I just all I want to do is count my millions. And if you look up to that, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. I think I'm just laughing at the idea of someone worshipping Bernard Tomic so much that they're... <laughs> I don't know, that's just... To me, that's funny. Like, someone has, like, a Bernard Tomic throne in their in their room. I bet this, there would be someone who does. And, man, I would want to see that. And I'd love to... I would love to get on this podcast to justify their Bernard Tomic fandom. And to try and convince me that he's a that he's a good human. I mean, I actually have friends of mine. I have you know friends of mine who actually know Burn Atomic well through the tennis community. I've never met him, but uh, I mean, I'm sure he's an he's an alright guy off the field. But man, stop back like a piece of shit on my TV, okay? Um, what else do I also want to talk about? <laughs> now that I'm done, absolutely destroying. Um, what, what's his name, dude? Who calls that kid Bernard? <laughs> Um, alright, the next thing on my list was, um, my, my, on my bloody little list of things I wanted to, wanted to have a little bloody chat about, um, okay, paintball, I played paintball on the weekend, guys, um, it was like, the, it was good fun, I'd, I'd never been paintballing, if you don't know what paintballing is, it's like, laser tag, it, it's pretty obvious, everyone knows what paintball is, watch Jackass, alright, you p- fire, it's like a semi-automatic air gun, that fires balls of paint. Um, and, you know, I, really, I, I've always wanted to do it, but mainly just to know how much it hurts. Like, how much it hurts your... Not even physically, how much it hurts emotionally to be continually shot by strangers with paint. And I tell you what, it doesn't feel good. Alright, physically or emotionally. And, you know, after, after like the first game, I was already covered in bruises, and um, I went with a few friends... I went with Lewis, uh, who's, you know, obviously friend of the podcast, uh, do the radio show with, and man, he was weirdly good at it. Like, I thought Lewis was, like, cause he can't run. Lewis Spears is the one of the most unathletic human beings on the planet, but holy shit, he could paintball. Except he, he was too tall to hide behind anything. He's like two meters tall, so he would, like, squat and crouch behind a barrel and would just get absolutely like pounded like in the head with paint like everyone else had a black helmet and then at the end Lewis's was just like pink and yellow <laughs> because he couldn't hide his face and uh, man he was weirdly good I was okay at it you know I would say Lewis was better than me at paintball which I hate to admit and it, it pains me a lot to say that but I don't know I've just I've never seen a human being try that hard at something like it, it was for for a brief moment his number one passion in life was paintball, while all, like, my other mates and ours' passion was just like, yeah, fucking duck, 
Shit, ow, oh, oh, so shoot that guy. Ah, no, he's shooting me. Just run away, run away. <laughs> like, that's, that's what I was doing the whole game. But the whole time, Lewis was, like, strategizing to me. Like, uh, like those games, like, capture the flag where you've got to, you know, capture the other person's flag without getting shot and stuff and search and destroy and all the various games you play. And for each one, Lewis was strategizing, like, with our team, with complete strangers. Like, all right. Guys, we'll flank him on the left. You cover me, okay? I'm going to make a run for the bridge. But don't shoot before I make the run for the bridge. Everyone, come back. Then as soon as I get up, and I'm like, dude, this isn't Afghanistan, all right? <laughs> These people have also paid 200 bucks, all right? These people have paid way too much money, just like we have, to shoot paintballs at their friends, okay? They're not the Taliban. <laughs> Barn. <laughs> Taliban. I meant Taliban. Why did I say Taliban? The Taliban sounds like a really fancy version. Like, they got gold-plated RPGs and, like, the Taliban. No, it just seems really upmarket. Like, it seems like they have a lot of formalities, you know. Like, you know, if you are going to do a suicide run, wear your best tux in the Taliban, okay? Because we, we, we do not associate with the Taliban. But the Taliban... I don't know why. <laughs> I don't think anything is upmarket in Afghanistan, just from what I've seen on the news and Al Jazeera. Um, but anyway, Lewis was like just full on strategizing, and all these people were like, <laughs> we're just confused. We're like, wait, aren't you that guy from the internet? Why are you taking this so seriously? And it got to the point right, where a couple of people recognized Lewis and I from either the radio or our videos or whatever. So we became like a bit of a target. But yeah, amongst the group, like, oh, shoot the bloody meme lords, that's funny. Which is funny, but not when I'm the meme lord, okay? Like, I was, and even a guy on my team, right, I, I ran, I forget what happened, I ran, like, you know, between, like, one set of crates to another to hide behind, and I ran and I kind of slid on my side, and then, like, quickly crouched behind the crate with my gun, and I was, like, panting, and I was looking over, like, oh, you know, I might be able to get a shot in, you know, oh, there's the flag captured. I was pretty focused on the game. And then the, the guy next to me who I just happened to, you know, slide in next to was like, oh, <laughs> hey, man, um, are you Luke Kidgel? And I was like, oh, yeah, man, I am. And I was like, oh, maybe you saw my name on the sign-up form or something. <laughs> um, and then he was like, man, I'm such a huge fan of the videos. And as he's saying this, it's just paintballs are just going over my head and they hurt, you know what I mean, like they leave bruises, you're like, oh fuck, and I was like, oh cool man, thanks so much, I appreciate it, he goes, oh man, like, um, I'm just such a huge fan, it's so great to meet you, and I was like, yeah, not really the time champ, like, <laughs> so getting back to like three weeks ago of the weirdest fan interaction, that was up there, in the middle of a paintball course, I was getting shot at and some dude was just like completely stopped and was like, hey man, Love your shit. So that was very kind. Thank you very much. But um, I think because he said that, I copped like three in the arm. And now I've got welts all down um, my shoulder. So thank you, mate, um, <laughs> for that. But here's the thing. The worst thing that happened, right? Oh, man. So here's, at these places, right, you pay an exorbitant amount of money to do this. I think it was like $85 for 500 paintballs or some shit. And, and the most you could get, like, some people were buying 2,000 paintballs and paying, like, 300 bucks. And we were just like, no, we're just going to get the minimum and just stay till lunchtime and just go all out. Like, we're not going to stay here all day and shoot a bunch of dudes with World of Warcraft t-shirts with paint. All right, I'm here for... I, we only stayed for, like, half the day because we just bitched it so early. We stayed from, like, 9 till 1. <laughs> and, the, the, and the whole paintball day went till 4. And we were just like, no, nah, I'm bruised, I'm broken... And I got paint in my mouth. I need to leave. All right, so we bought like the minimum amount of paintballs because we're all cheapskates. And um, then uh, you could also purchase a groin guard and gloves. Um, and look, we thought well, this is a good idea. You know, a groin guard, paintballs, it hurts a lot. If you get shot in the dick, not going to be enjoyable. But also, very funny. So I rolled the dice and went, hey, I'm not going to pay 20 bucks to cover my dick. What's the chances of someone hitting me in the cock anyway? It's fine. I'll just crouch behind things. I'm not going to run out into the field dick first. You know what I mean? Like, that wasn't my plan. So I was like, yep, yeah, I'll, I'll just keep it in my pants and I'm sure my dick will be fine. Didn't think anything of it. And then we're like halfway through the second game. And here's the thing. 
when you cover yourself in paintball, like you, you're covering yourself from the enemy. You're not really focusing on where the your other team members are shooting. So I'm worrying about the enemy, right? And I get hit like four times in the leg. And if you get hit, you have to put up your hands and you've got to run back to the spawn point. You're like, I've been hit. And then you run back to the spawn point and then you start again, right? So I got hit like really badly four times. So I quickly shot up. I was like, ah, I've been hit. You got me. And then turned around to run back. <laughs> turned around to run back to the back of the map, which is where you had to like, you know, restart from. And then someone from my own team shot me straight in the dick. Twice. Just went bang, bang. It was accidental. And I just dropped, man. I was like, I dropped like a sack of shit. <laughs> I just cry, I just got hunched over. And the dude was like, oh shit, I'm so sorry. And I was like, hey, that's cool, man. And then, um, and then obviously people started laughing because that is funny. Uh, shooting someone on your own team in the dick by accident. Very amusing. But when it's your balls in the question, I don't know. That was, I just didn't like it. But, do you know, I've never felt so alone. Like, honestly, like someone on your own team, I felt like I couldn't trust anymore. Like, I def definitely didn't trust the people on the other team. But I thought, oh, these people who are, you know, I'm doing paintball with and fighting alongside here in these fake trenches, they will protect me and not shoot me in the ball sack. And then, what do you know? Boom. Two. Straight. Like, the first one got me straight in the nut. And the second one, I'd already moved slightly down. So, it clipped my nut and then ricocheted into my thigh. But, man, it felt like my ball sack had gout for, like, two days. <laughs> it was so bad. And you, guys will know. Girls probably wouldn't. I don't know how to describe it to girls. But, guys will know that sinking feeling you get in your stomach after a good nut shot. It's like you kind of need a munt shit and throw up all at the same time. It's just like the most confusing feeling and it's like in your bladder, like not, people think it would hurt your dick, it hurts your stomach for some reason. And I don't know what that's like, I don't know what it's like to get paintballed in the tit. I'm assuming that wouldn't be pleasant either, but man, I should have bought the groin guard was uh, the moral of that story. But also the moral of the story was stick by your guns and um, I was I was right. It was quite funny getting shot in the dick. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that was one of the worst. That's that's probably the worst thing that happened all week. Um, well, the best thing was probably going to paintball, but then the worst thing was getting shot in the dick at paintball. So it all just evened out, and you know, like it was so. It got to the point where like people in my family were actually concerned. Like my parents texted me, like they were away on holiday, and I think my brother had spoken to them on the phone. They're like, "Hey, how was paintball?" Because my brother was there as well. And he's like, yeah, good, Luke got shot in the dick. And then I got a text later on that night from my mum saying, hey, uh, how is paintball? Are we still having grandkids? <laughs> there was genuine concern about my fertility after that incident, and rightly so. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I didn't reply to that text from my mum. I just left that one on red. Seen the shit out of her. I'm not answering questions about my nutsack over text, okay? You talk to me when you come back from holidays, all right? Um, all right, I'm gonna do some uh, bloody, I, I think that was it I had to talk about. I just wanted to rant about Burn Atomic and talk about how I got shot in the dick. Oh no, I had another thing I wanted to talk about quickly. Um, I read this story, I haven't really done this for a while, one of these like messed up news stories from during the week. Because um, I've been out of the radio game and usually I read the news when I'm on the radio, but I've been having a bit of a break. But I saw this one during the week and it, to be honest, at first when I saw it on Facebook, I thought it was like a Batuta Advocate article, or like The Onion, like I thought it was a joke article, because it just just read, Millionaire Hires Strippers for Son's 12th Birthday Party. And it's not a joke article, okay? That's It's definitely real, there was a video, oh, I saw the kid who was being lap danced by the, million, uh, by the strippers, not the millionaire dad. Though that would have been interesting if the strippers had to force the dad to give him a lap dance. Then he would have been like, fuck, regret this. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I couldn't believe this shit. Like, here's the thing. Obviously, the dad is like a terrible human being, a terrible father. Like, I don't know what I did for my 12th birthday. I think I went to Macca's for my 12th birthday party. Or, like, laser tag. I'm, I'm going to resent my dad forever. <laughs> like, yeah, dad, this Macca's party's been sweet. But there weren't any tits in my Happy Meal. 
Like there was a distinct, <laughs> there was a distinct like a vagina running around at laser tag. Explain that. You know what? And that's because my dad's not a millionaire, and that's the only difference. Also, it's because he's a good father and not a piece of shit. Um, I couldn't believe that shit. And you know who it was worse for? I was watching this video, and I was like, man, the, the kid felt so uncomfortable. Imagine being 12 years old. You're in grade six. You don't even know what your dick is yet. You just like you've gotten your first boner and you've cried because you're like, I don't know what to do. It gets up and, you know, I have to flip it up into my waistband in class. It's confusing me. I get boners in the library. I don't know what's happening to my body. You're at, like, the worst stage of your life. And then you, your dad goes, like, yeah, you grab this chick's ass. Like, there's, in the footage, the dad is, like, forcing his son's hand onto this stripper's ass. And, and yes, the kid feels horribly uncomfortable, but you have no idea how uncomfortable the stripper looked like this lady this is her job and it's illegal what she's doing is like is illegal it's like i mean she's not fucking him but like she's like kind of like sexually engaging with a minor i guess i guess it's not really like there's no penetration happening but oh, i don't know i imagine giving a 12 year old a lap dance how could you not feel creepy that's hot. Like, that is illegal. That's definitely illegal. You could be put in prison for that. And, like, this is just on the internet. And, like, everyone is just cheering in the background. And, I, you know what's worse? It wasn't, like, the kid's school friend party. Although, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? Imagine picking your kids up from that. Like, oh, I just dropped Tommy off to um, uh, David and uh, Bethany's house. David's a bit of a millionaire, so I think it's going to be quite a bit of an extravagant party. Um, but that's right. We'll pick him up in our four hours, and I'm sure it'll be a great day. Then four hours later... You rock up in your minivan. You're like, all right, kids, we've got soccer practice. And then these two strippers just walk out with their tits hanging out. And you're like, oh, fuck, I think I'm at the wrong address. And then David and Bethany goes, Cassandra, how you going? Come in. So the strippers have just left, so you've just missed it. But come in. We've, we've still got fairy bread. And you'd be like, what the fuck have I sent my kids to? Like, <laughs> what's happening? You go inside and there's just like there's still pussy juice on the chair. You gotta wipe it off before you sit. And there's the, the 12 year old birthday boy. The kid's just trembling in the corner and he's still got a bone up and he doesn't know why. And, and but he can't look his dad in the eye. And you, and then you tell you you, you talk, speak to your own kid. And you're like, oh, how was the uh, birthday party? What did I miss? And the kid would just be torn between like lying to your face, like, oh no, it was good, mum. We just uh, played. Pass the parcel, but would also be like, Bitch, if you ever give me a Macca's party again, swear to God, I'll call the strippers myself. That was fucking incredible. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't even know, like, if I'd seen, like, I, 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 don't, I don't think I've really ever seen, like, a picture. Or, I may have seen, like, a picture or something, but I don't think I'd ever seen, like, I, I definitely never seen boobs. You know what I mean? Like when I, Like, when I was 12, I hadn't seen boobs yet. Imagine... Being in that situation with you and all your friends, just like looking at like these D cups, like being pressed into your, you know, your, like your mate's face, and he's twelve and you're twelve, and you're just like, huh? Didn't expect this when I woke up this morning. Gotta go home and finish my math homework. Like, how would you ever? I wouldn't be able to concentrate for like a month at school after that. Okay, like, <laughs> it's it was just surreal. Like, I, I don't know, you guys could, you can look up the, the video, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find it. It was just, man, and the, the way the dad was acting was horrible. Just like, what a horrible human being, like, egging his son on. The kid didn't want to be there, and I know I'm joking about it, but it was fucking horrible. It was horrible for everyone involved. The kid was hating it. Actually, no, it was horrible for the kid and the stripper. The dad was just drunk off his face, throwing money at this chick's tits, going like, yep. Fucking put your pussy in my son's face. Dude. And, and you know, so I don't know if the mum was there. Like, I don't know what the mum thought. Maybe maybe the mum was one of the strippers. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. It was just horrible. I saw that and couldn't believe it. It was one of the most horrifying things I've ever seen on the internet. And not, like, I, I wasn't offended by it. I was just like, man, imagine being that kid. I mean, you're 13th, but, like, and that's, that's how stupid the dad is. Like, how do you top that? What do you do for the 13th? Like, take him to a brothel? How, how do you top that? You can't can't take him to a bloody 
I don't know, the movies with his friends. You Oh, sleepover for your 14th. Yeah, Dad, two years ago, you got me strippers. Like, what's that kid's Bucks party going to be like now? You've set the bar just so ridiculous, like, just at a, such a ridiculous level where this kid doesn't even know how to feel about women anymore, let alone every birthday from now on. It's just going to be, like, in fear of, like, man, what has my dad got planned? Like, will I actually have to... Like, he'll... Like, is he actually going to take me to Thailand and fuck a ladyboy for my 15th? Like, that's that's where that's the trajectory that that kid is on right now. I'm pretty sure I just pronounced trajectory wrong. Trajectory. Traje- <laughs> you know what's stupid? I was in a video during the week of me having a go at Lachlan and Jackson uh, Fairburn. The, the Fairburn. Look up Fairburn Films where I was in a video. You might have seen me share it um, last night um, on Facebook, but... Yeah, <laughs> like I was, I was in a video during the week where I was telling them off uh, for mispronouncing words. Like they were like banana and apple for banana and apple. And I was like on the other side going like, what are you guys saying? But the whole time I was just thinking like, man, I think I've pronounced banana like that before. Like I could have made the same video, but it wouldn't have been a joke. Like I would have been like, yeah, I drove there in my Pugot. And they would have been like, Pugot, what are you saying? I'm like, yeah, just go watch the video, okay? The point is, it was very ironic. I I was in a video calling people out for speaking like morons. And I'm like, Matt, have you met me? Like, trajectory. Uh, I wonder what trajectory that kid's going to be on. Hey, I know. Probably better than yours, because you can't even speak, you fucking moron. (laughs) I'm such an idiot. (laughs) Um, Alright, anyway, that's enough. The the point, I just wanted to talk about that. I couldn't believe that. That millionaire too. What a nut. That dad's a prick. Um, Alright, the millionaire stripper thing's done. Alright, next is the questions. Uh, let's do it. We're up to that time of the podcast. Bloody life advice. I told people, can you send in some life advice, okay? Um, this one's from Gabriel. Uh, hey, I started listening to your podcast a week ago, and I'm currently sat in my statistics mock listening to episode 69. Yes, I have no social life. I'm assuming by mock you mean mock exam or something like that. And um, what do you mean? You, you, that doesn't mean you have no social life. That just means that you're not focusing on your statistics right now. Um, she said, you're fucking amazing, honestly. I've never listened to a podcast, but it's seriously addictive. Hey, thank you so much, Gabrielle. You legend. Um, my favorite part was when you didn't realize Eccle and Sewell was a story about yourself and Lewis. Brilliant. Again... Another prime example of me being an absolute moron. Of me being so stupid that it had to be pointed out that I cannot read in reverse. Despite when the story directly relates. If you didn't hear that podcast, man, I don't remember what episode it was on. But what happened was, I'll just really briefly, I read out this email of some guy talking about him and his mate in a running race called Eccle and Sewell. And... Me and Lewis were currently in a running race on the radio show. And I just... I'm such a dickhead. Anyway, I just didn't realise and I answered his question seriously. And everyone was like, oh, he meant you and Lewis, you dickhead. And I was like, yep. Got me. (laughs) There's there's nothing I could do other than be like, yep. Game, set, match. Absolutely roasted me, got me good. There's nothing you can do. I'm not going to make excuses. Like if a Channel 7 news reporter came up to me after the game like, Hey Luke, how'd you go out there today? I wouldn't be like, oh, I'm just going to go home and count my money, man. All I'll do is count my millions. I just had to admit it. That dude got me good. Okay, so that's what happened that time. Um, Gabrielle's question that she actually wrote in with is, My question for you is, Every time I see you on social media, you're doing something. How do you physically find the motivation and sleep enough hours to actually get shit done? Um, firstly, I don't sleep enough hours. That's becoming a major problem in my life. I'm like one of those dudes where everyone like just <laughs> everyone just comments all the time. Like in my personal life, like man, are you okay? You you look like shit. Like everyone just goes, you need to sleep more. But I don't know. I like doing comedy too much. It's fun. Yeah, I had a guy on Snapchat the other go the other day go, hey man. You need to go to sleep. You look like a fucking raccoon. <laughs> That's just mean. It was just mean. But he was right. I do need to sleep more. So, yeah, to answer your question, Gabriel, um, 
I don't uh, actually sleep enough hours, which I should. I think you're already supposed to sleep, like, eight hours a night. Here's the thing. I'll go, like, four days in a row where I have, like, five, six hours sleep, and then I'll sleep once a week for, like, 12 hours. Like, then that's how I kind of even it out a bit. But, um, she said, how do you physically find the motivation uh, to actually get shit done? Um, it's not hard to find the motivation, Gabrielle, if you're doing something that you love. Uh, and I know I've said this a lot in the podcast, but it's... Uh, the most important thing I think to do in life is uh, you got to think about this. Like this might, might be the ser- most serious thing I ever say on the podcast, but <laughs> this is so this is so shit. But whatever, life is short. Okay, you know what I mean. Like I'm what 21, and you know, say when I'm 80, like I might be dead. So I might be already like a quarter of the way through my life. Like definitely a fifth, or over a fifth of the way through my life. And thank God I've spent the majority of that, I mean, at least the majority of the last few years pursuing something that I love. And even in high school, I used to love fucking round, so I did that. Um, And I've never had any regrets. So I think, I don't know, you don't want to wind up 40 years old working at a call center and being like, shit, I literally, like, that's how you have a midlife crisis. Because you're like, it's halfway through my life. I'd probably rather just die soon then keep doing this. And you've got no motivation, so you just sleep, because that's like the best thing about your life. So I think, the to answer your question, the way I find motivation to physically get up every day and do shit that either furthers my career, or, um, you know, furthers a personal relationship with someone, whether it's spending time with my friends, or my girlfriend, or my family, or whatever, is just, it's what I like to do. Uh, pretty much, obviously there's things in life that you don't, you know, you're not going to like to do everything. And the way you get through those things is like, ah, oh, can't we fuck to do this? It's just do it because it will lead to better things. Like this morning I had to, uh, you know, send up a couple of invoices, make a few calls about my tour, speak to a couple of venue managers. And that shit is, you can put it off so easily. I'm like, oh, I don't have motivation to do that. But I'm like, it'll take an hour. And it did. I just did it for an hour because then for the rest of the day I was like, oh, great. I get to write some jokes. Uh, I'm going to go for a run later, which I enjoy, and I'm going to do my podcast, and then tonight I might edit a video. And those are all things I enjoy. So in the morning, I just wake up, get through all the shitty phone calls or whatever, and at the end of the day, those phone calls are organizing shit for my tour. They're organizing the shows, which will be awesome. And so it, at the end of the day, it's, it's finding something you love, and I don't think you'll have to find motivation. But um, my advice for finding motivation for something you don't love is, I don't know, and you, I could find motivation like to go to my job at the golf club. I don't work there anymore. I don't think I've talked about that, guys. I quit, by the way. I quit my job at the golf club like three months ago when I started radio. Um, but uh, anyway, the, the, the way to find motivation to do that was it was helping me pay for my flights on my tour. It was helping me pay for my camera equipment to, to pursue comedy. It was helping me pay... That's the way I found motivation. It was helping me uh, achieve tiny, like it was a tiny little goal of getting a few hundred dollars a week to help pay for all this comedy shit, and that was my, my motivation because it was it was technically helping me pursue something I love, even though I obviously didn't love going to work. No one does, but um, yeah. So I think to find motivation, Gabrielle, I would work out what you like to do, work out what you want to do with your life, and um. It, it, and that doesn't have to be career-wise, by the way. It can be a hobby. It can be playing guitar. It can be spending time with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, whatever floats your boat. Um, it can be spending time with your family. Whatever you like to do, um, put that last in your day and then throughout your whole day, work towards achieving that or learning a new song in your, your guitar. Whatever the fuck you're into, just that's, I don't know, that's, how, that's what works for me. Working towards things you love. Man, that was the most serious answer I've ever given. Well, I don't. I think I now just have to talk about dicks for two minutes to even that out. Um, hang on, there's more uh, of part of her email. I'm kind of struggling getting motivated, and you seem to have been successful these last few years. Uh, P.S. Please come to the UK. I've signed up to the cult, and I want to come to a show real bad. Um, I hope, really, really hoping to get to the UK as soon as possible. That's again, that's one of the long-term goals. Wherever I achieve all my goals in Australia. I'll finally be able to achieve the long-term goal and go overseas and do some comedy, um, which would be awesome. So, um, thank you very much, Gabrielle. Um, I really haven't been successful these last few years. I would say I'm, I'm 
achieving minor, minor, minor successes only in the last few months. Or really since my tour, that was like the first thing that had been a success really that I did. So, um, and then, you know, the radio show and stuff. It definitely hasn't been the last few years, I can tell you that much, Gabrielle. Two years ago, none of you knew who the fuck I was. So, <laughs> that shows you that I haven't I haven't been super successful these last few years. I think people forget that about me, to be honest. I think people forget that I've only been doing this for for two years. Like I've, I've technically been doing it for two and a half, almost three, but this is my second tour this year. Like, I think, I, you know, because I do a lot of stuff with Lewis and Frenchie and all the guys and jo- Josh Wade and Neil and all that stuff. Man, they're all up to their, their like, uh, f- you know, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th tour. Um, you know what I mean? Like, and I, I don't, not that I don't, I don't mind being compared to them. It's, it's a compliment because I'm a huge fan of all their work. But, um, you know, even Lewis this year will be doing his 4th tour. Um, and I'm only up to my 2nd. I think people forget that. They're like, oh, you know, Luke is just... I'm like, dude, I still have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. I'm literally... I feel like you guys, whenever you send this in, like, help! That's what I do. But I just don't have a podcast to send it into. <laughs> um, you know, I feel like, you know, this is really just the start. And, um, you know, and, and that's why some things I want to improve. Eventually, I want to get this podcast filmed every week. Um, I'm currently filming the podcast now. But uh, only really to upload like maybe a little clip to Instagram and stuff because I just my mic can't connect to the camera and I need a budget and it's a, you know an extra two hours of my time syncing up the audio and stuff and then uploading it. It's I just can't afford to do all that shit yet. And obviously, um, you know, there's a few people who have progressed with their podcasts and are on YouTube and stuff, and that's something I'd like to get into. But again, like two years in, I can't even believe. Uh, that I have the ability to do a weekly podcast and people give a shit about it. So that's what I'm thankful for at the moment. Anyway, what am I talking about? I just wanted to say that um, I'm actually not successful. That's what I was trying to point out to you, Gabrielle. Um, (laughs) Mac. This runs from Mac. Hey, Luke. I was at a football game and I bought a pie. Oh, no. I already know where this is going. This is going to be another another source horror story. Guys, during the week, obviously last uh, week's podcast, I talked quite extensively about my disgust for, particularly in Australia, expensive source prices. Pretty much the source market has, is worth about as much as a Bitcoin these days. If you want a sachet of source, you've got to invest in cryptocurrency and uh, you, you pretty much got to invest in property and then sell it to afford source in your pie in this um you know, economical climate here in Australia. But, um, yeah, this week I've been receiving all your source horror stories and Jesus Christ, it's been really hard to listen to, guys. And here's, here's one from Mac. And I'll I'll get through it quickly because I know this is hard to hear for all of you guys as well. Lots of source fans listening to this podcast, apparently. <laughs> this one is from Mac. Okay. Oh, man, it breaks my heart reading these. I was at a football game and I bought a pie. The lady at the counter asked if I wanted sauce. And because I'm white, I said yes. Very good move, Mac. Um, I would expect nothing less. She passed me a bottle of sauce and I put it on and I passed it back. I started to walk away and she said, Excuse me, that'll be 25 cents. I stood there for about 20 seconds in complete disbelief. How could you do that? And that's the end of his email. And Mac... Here's the thing that really got me about this one. This is the thing that really pulled my heartstrings. Obviously, I'm really sorry for your loss of 25 cents. Uh, no human should have to go through that for a tomato sauce. Here's There's two things that got me about this. One, she said, do you want sauce? Right? Like, she offered to you like she was doing you a favor, which she was because everyone likes sauce on a pie, but making you pay for it? No, 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 no. Honey, oh, oh honey, sweetie, Dal, who works at the canteen... That is not a favour, hun. Okay? L- look me in the eye, Dal. <laughs> I don't know why. They're all just old, so I'm just assuming. Because that's what they call me. Oh, honey, would you like some sauce? Hey, I don't know you. Do not call- I hate when old people do that. Hey, hun. Excuse me, dear. Shut up. Don't know ya. Stop using pet names towards me. You're like 60. Lick of the dick. Okay? So, whatever your face is, who's working at the canteen, 
Not a favor if you're making me pay for it. That's the first thing that got me. And then the fact that she had the audacity to be like, to, to pass you the bottle. And then obviously, like, it's a squeeze. It's a squeeze. You're not paying for a squeeze. You're not paying for a squirt of sauce. You, like, if anything, you pay for a sachet because they have to order them in. But, like, what about if you want one drop of sauce? They're going to charge you five cents? How do you work out how much is of one full squeeze? You can't get a squeezy bottle and charge people 25 cents per squeeze. Dude, that's insane. That's like a whole bottle's worth. Is like that, that, that bottle is worth more than a Bitcoin by the end. That that bottle is worth more than Bernard Tomic, which is isn't hard. But like, <laughs> seriously, I can't. Oh, dude, I I read that you you said you said in your story that you stood there for about twenty seconds in disbelief. I read your email during the week and just froze. I couldn't believe it. Here was the worst horror story I had during the week, guys. You you guys will not believe this. I could not fathom, can't fathom how inhuman people are. Especially in the cafe and hospitality industry involving hot pies and or sausage rolls. The level of disrespect towards the consumer in Australia is getting out of hand. This is an honest to God, true story that got sent to me during the week on Snapchat. Um, I'm not sure if I screenshot it. i got to go find it. Hang on. Oh, no, wait. I don't think I screenshot that one. But, okay, here's another one. Actually, I do have one screenshot. This one was the second worst horror story I heard about Source. And then I'll get to the worst one. Uh, this one's from Millie. Oh wait, before I start, um, she starts off uh, this message with a rant and a bit of a Queenbian diss. Uh, it's a place in Canberra that I was trashing on the podcast le- uh, last week. Um, it's a fucking shithole. So it starts off with a Queenbian diss, which I will read because it's quite good. And then it moves on to the source horror story. So just uh, bear bear with Millie and her distaste for Queenbian, the suburb in the ACT. Uh, for a second, and then we'll get into the sore stuff. So it said, Hey Luke, so you know in The Lion King when Simba and Mufasa are on Pride Rock, and Simba asks what the shadowy place over there is? Well, Queenbian is the shadowing place to Canberra. We all hate them with a passion and don't speak to them. So that that was her Queenbian just out of the way. Now is where the email gets properly sad. Also, I'm listening to your podcast right now, and we went to this bakery on a road trip once, and they charged us... 80 fucking cents for some tomato sauce. What the fuck? Hey, Millie, we're here for you, okay? Anyone listening to this podcast who has been ripped off, been used, diddled, or corrupted, or swindled by the Australian sauce industry... We are here for you, and I can definitely say, we as a podcast will not be silent. Because ladies and gentlemen, today, right now, here on this podcast, some might think that I'm making this up, and those people would be correct, but it feels right in the moment to start a movement uh, called, what should we call it? The Source Force. It's a force that enforces free source... Um, oh, no, I got it. Better. We are Source Bandits, okay? And this is how it's going to work from now on. We don't pay for Source, ladies and gentlemen. I, okay, I've never, I never want to incite thievery on this podcast. I never want to, I never want to incite criminal behavior until now. <laughs> Millie, or who, Mac, what was it, was the other guy? We're going to get them back, okay? Mark my words during the week. I will heist whether it's a squeeze or a sachet. It doesn't matter. I will not pay for sauce. Maybe. We'll see if they force me. But I will start a movement called the Sauce Bandits. And if anyone wants to join me in in our, I would say, quest, for justice against the Australian sauce industry, then please join us. Um, all you've got to do is uh, rack some sauce and don't get caught. And if you do get caught, I didn't tell you to do it. <laughs> I didn't tell you to steal sauce. That would be irresponsible. You know what? And I'm going to say this right now. I'm going to get this quote up just in case uh, 
get put into court. I, ladies and gentlemen, do not condone that you steal sauce. And what you didn't hear then was a wink, because it was a silent wink, but uh, it still was there regardless. So take that as you will. Uh, I just want to say I don't to concern stealing, but you know what I mean. They've forced us to desperate measures. And personally, I think charging for sauce should be outlawed. There needs to be, you know what, I'll, I'll put my hand up. I can be the lead sauce sheriff, and I will try and outlaw it in my town. But you know what I mean? I, it can't be just me. This is going to be a joint effort, guys. And I, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but perhaps leave the muffins alone just for a week. Don't tell them. Let's not tell the cheeky muffs we're leaving them alone. Just shift your focus to the sauce industry, okay? And I swear, swear to God, within a week, we could, we could change the world, okay? All you got to do is, like, at a cafe, buy a pie. They charge you for sauce. Go, yeah, I'd like some sauce. And they go, that'll be 50 cents. And just say, hey... You know what? Show them your Australian passport. Show them that you're an Australian and ask, the, ask for them to see theirs, okay? Because they're, cause they're not... Fa and also, if they show you an Australian passport, it's fucking fake. If they're, if they're trying to charge you for sauce and they're claiming that they're Australian, we're fucking full, okay? Get out. I don't care if you're fourth generation Australian. I don't even care if you're indigenous, okay? If you're an indigenous Australian. If you're charging me for sauce, like... I'm sorry my people took your country, but, you know, give me a break. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. But um, the point is, don't take, I'm, I'm not taking, I'm not, I'm not being charged for sauce anymore. I've, I've honestly just cracked it. I refuse. I'd rather eat a dry pie. Hashtag dry pie. If, you, if you're being stopped, you know, there's too many, there's too many hashtags and stuff. I can't do hashtag sauce force, hashtag sauce bandits, hashtag... Dry pie, I don't know, hashtag cheeky pies. I don't know what we're doing. There's too many hashtags. Maybe we should start slapping sauce if you have to pay for it. Like, pay for it in front of them. Maybe that's the ultimate protest. Like, Excuse me, that'll be 25 cents. Handing over 25 cents and then fucking throwing the pie at her. You fucking, I can't believe that. Oh, do you want sauce with that? Hey, would you like me to pretend to you I'm doing you a favour? And then pull your pants down and make you pay $25 for sauce and publicly humiliate you? Where everyone goes, look at this dickhead, paying, paying for a squeeze. What an asshole. <laughs> point is, I don't really know what my point is, to be honest. Okay, no. Before I move on, I've got to tell you about the worst source horror story that you guys sent me during the week. I don't. All I remember was the price, okay? I don't even remember how it happened. The, at the end of the day, some guy got charged $2 for a squeeze. Two. I'll say that again. I, I think some some of you guys are probably adjusting your earphones right now. Probably like going, oh, that's weird. It sounded like Luke said two dollars. I'll probably just rewind and and you know confirm that. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, two dollars. Two dollars Australian, if you must know. For not a sachet of sauce. No, 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 no. That, that would also be a rip-off, but a squeeze. One pump of the hand in a sauce bottle. Two dollars. Hey, excuse me. Imagine having the balls to ask that. Excuse me, mate. Sorry, that'll be two dollars. I would laugh at the person. I would honestly think it's a joke. Like, all jokes aside, I would assume they were fucking with me, and I'd do that awkward laugh where you're like, aha, uh -huh. wait, what? And they'd be like, that's two dollars. And then I would laugh again, like, oh my god, this dude's serious. There is no way in hell, son, I'm paying a gold coin to, for tomato sauce. I forget who sent this to me, and whoever you are, I truly am sorry for your loss, and I'm sorry that, that it's happened to you, but it's kind of like the Holocaust. It sets an example of how to act in years Beyond, You know, I hope something that tragic will never happen again in the history of the human race. And if it does, um, we blame the Germans. I think that's how it goes. If you ever get charged two dollars for sauce, um, I don't know. Check him for a swash sticker. It just doesn't feel right. Okay, because no bloody Australian's charging you two bucks for sauce. Uh-uh. No way. There's no chance that as, as long as Shane Warne is an Australian citizen... There is no chance in hell 
that he's letting that fly in his own country. I'm pretty is he's pretty much our prime minister, isn't he? Like that he what's what Warney says about the source prices is what goes. And I'm pretty sure Warney's stance on source is very much free, subsidized by the cost of the pie. Now, I will admit I've talked about this for way too long, so I am going to move on. But as long as you guys know who have been affected uh, earlier in your life or this week by uh, raising source prices, that um, I'm here for you. We all are. Um, Join the podcast group. Um, We'll start a bit of a support thread, perhaps to share your source stories. And um, yeah, I think the best thing to do is speak about it. Um, Don't bottle it up. Um, And yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Fuck the industry, man. They're they're getting me down. Um, I think that's the end of the podcast. Uh, Thank you guys very much for listening. I don't have anything to plug at the moment. It's so good. Just to go, I'm just like, hey, tell your friend about the podcast. Um, Oh, actually, you know what? I will keep plugging my mailing list. Um, Go to Luke Kidgel dot com slash shows uh the tour has been like the the dates are, i've got some of the dates already locked in um i'm i would imagine maybe a few weeks away from announcing it it's really super exciting um so if you want to find out when i'm coming and you want to find out when the pre-sale is because uh that's the only way to get pre-sale tickets because man i especially if you're in perth i really worry perth will it depends how nice perth are to me but if they're as nice as to me last year, it's going to sell out really quick. I don't know. I'm Yeah, anyway, definitely if you're in Perth, sign up. And um, Adelaide as well. There's a few places where I maybe, shouldn't have, maybe should have chosen a bigger venue. <laughs> but um, that's right. I'll see what I can do. Um, but yeah, the most important thing is if you, uh, if you guys sell it out quickly, then I could add another show in some places if the demand's there. But uh, that pretty much requires uh, whoever wants to come uh, to yeah, sign up to the mailing list. So I'd love it if you all went and did that. Thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast. Uh, I'll be back next week, every single Tuesday. I am going to... What am I going to do? I'm just going to go count my money and uh, count my millions. So uh, thank you guys. Have a good one.